It is Friday, May 7, 2010, and welcome to This Week in Linux News. Starting things off with Ubuntu news, Mark Shuttleworth has been a busy boy this week. On Monday, Mark announced that he's figured out what they're going to do with Ubuntu 10.10 in the upper right-hand side of your window. There were a lot of people that were really upset when they moved the buttons over to the left-hand side, but they've come up with something to replace them. Windicators. Some possible indicators could be an online, offline status indicator, an unsaved indicator to let you know that your document hasn't been saved yet, a progress indicator to show that there's an action in progress, a basket indicator which could be useful in something like the Ubuntu One Music Store, a sharing indicator to show if you've got a file shared out to multiple people, and a volume indicator which would actually allow you to manage the volume on an application-by-application -application basis. The good thing about these are, they're not just indicators, they will also have the ability to have configuration menus on each one. The problem I see, it could confuse a lot of users, but I can't wait to see it and give it a shot. The other big Ubuntu news this week, Mark Shuttleworth announced on Thursday that they're not going to be including GNOME Shell in Ubuntu 10.10 by default. They're going to be including it in the Ubuntu Universe repository so everybody can download it and try it out, but they're not going to force it on you. The way he makes it sound, they want to let everybody try it out before they make any final decisions and hopefully they'll be ready to put it in or not by Ubuntu 11.04. Another option that's been proposed would actually be to have your installation be configurable while you're installing it. So you could choose default programs, whether you want to install additional codecs, restricted DVD stuff, and of course whether you'd want to install GNOME Shell or not. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, Google is going to be holding their Google I.O. conference on May 19th and 20th. That's all well and good, there are about 4,000 people that are going to be there, but what happens to the rest of us who aren't going to be able to make it? Google has come up with a solution for that. They're going to be live streaming the keynotes from the 19th and the 20th live on YouTube, youtube.com slash Google Developers. Yes, it's only the keynotes, it's not the entire event, but it sounds like they're going to be showing a lot of new exciting technologies during that, so hopefully we're going to hear some stuff about VP8. I will, of course, put a link to the YouTube channel down in the doobly-doo, so make sure to check that out on May 19th at 9 a.m. In some interesting gaming news, Winchgate, the creator of the MMORPG Rhizom, has decided to open source the entire project. The client, the server, tools associated with that, and all of the artwork, including the 3D models and all the sounds. The Free Software Foundation is going to be joining them in this venture, and they're going to make it Creative Commons by attribution, so there's going to be a ton more opportunities for open source developers to make games that are similar to this, or maybe even make their own derivative works based on it. And at the end of the day, that will get distributed to the community because of that share-like license. This does not, however, affect the Rhizome game normally, the game that people are paying to play. The, the clients and servers are all still going to stay the same, it's just that the newer version is going to be open source so that other people can derive works from it. And finally, at the Web 2.0 Expo earlier this week in San Francisco, Adobe was found demoing a tablet that they're working on. They had a bunch of smartphones there that were all running Android, there was nothing Apple related to be found. If you're not familiar with what's going on, Adobe has basically been pushed out of the Apple mobile platform, so this is going to be Adobe's way to make their way back into the mobile world. There are several YouTube videos showing this in action with Flash running on it. I will link to the story that's on zetomax.com so you can take a look at the story, all the pictures, the videos, and everything associated with it. I'm halfway convinced that this is just going to be another tablet that may or may not ever make it to market. If it does, it'll be wonderful for Adobe. If it doesn't, nobody's ever going to notice. Anyway, that's all for this week in Linux news. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Coffee.